Hey everyone, this is Fabrino and welcome back to a new video. Um, I was thinking since we are in October and October by now is synonymous with horror, um, I really wanted to do something horror themed or some nonsense like that. Because the thing is, I don't care about Halloween, I never did. Um, but at the same time, I kind of wanted to do a horror themed video as said. So, I decided to do the closest thing possible because, for example, play a horror game or something like that is like, no, I don't really have the time, I'm kind of busy, plus I'm playing Tales of Berseria, so I'm kind of, my plate is kind of full at the moment. However, something came up into my mind and I thought, hey, this is kind of a cool idea, it's something that I always wanted to do, and it's within the horror umbrella, and that would be a nice show and discussion of my Resident Evil collection. Since I've discovered, by putting it together, that it's kind of one of the biggest within my gaming collection. I got 15 games, even though we got 14 here, because one has gone somewhere, and because uh, I'm pretty sure I own Code Veronica X on PS2, but I think it stayed in London for now. So, Resident Evil, um, one of my favorite series of all time. Uh, we all know about it. It's a very big multimedia franchise by now. It's not just limited to games. There are movies, uh, CGI movies, there are comic books, books. It, it's a huge series. And I just say, like, we got 15 games. Um, and I don't even own all of the games, uh, but it's 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 ridiculously big. We all know it's made by Capcom uh, as a sort of next level, following the their earlier experiments with the horror genre with the Sweet Home game on the Famicom, which that one for it looks so interesting. I've never had a chance to play Sweet Home for obvious reasons. I mean, there are ways, obviously, but I'm not too much into, I don't know, emulations and stuff like that. So if you play it with home, let me know, because it looks like a sort of horror RPG, survival RPG. I mean, very, very cool stuff. And I'm pretty sure that Sweet Home is also based on a movie, which I've never able, like, my trail ended there, you know, I, like, I was never able to find it. So again, if you know something, let me know. However, um, so Capcom had sunk their teeth into horror games very early in their career, but of course with Resident Evil they'll hit very very big when the series debuted on the PS1. And Resident Evil has always been the reason why I fell in love with the PlayStation 1 and also remain a loyal fan to the series till this day, like despite the highs and lows, because of course the series hasn't been perfect throughout its very long existence by now, because I believe that the first game was released in 1996 or something like that, so very early. Also, I think it was very, a rather early PS1 title. But without further ado, let's start with where it all started, with Resident Evil 1. Now, this is not the first game I owned in the series, but it's the first one I, I saw and played. So, oh, a friend had it, like, he owned the game, I saw it, I was mesmerized because i never seen anything like that. I never experienced survival horror until I saw this game, and I really liked the idea, I really liked the concept. I mean, I, I, it wasn't scary at all, I, though I think Resident Evil 1 is kind of, it's rather creepy at times, but scary, no. But that's not the point of Resident Evil, of course. But, of course, for the time, this, like, the 3D characters and all of that was very um, mind-blowing. I mean, I've never seen anything like that, of course. And that's one of the reasons why I love the PS1 so much, is also because it was the first time for a lot of stuff for me, of course. The first time I played survival horror games, the first time I really got into JRPGs. So, no wonder I'm so obsessed with that system. So, but I really enjoyed this, but I, again, we play for an afternoon or something like that, but it had an impact, so I remember the name Resident Evil. So, a few years later, um, when was this? 
1999, so a couple of years later, because I'm pretty sure I saw this 1997, 1998. I, it wasn't brand new. Um, because again, I was getting into the PlayStation 1, so very early for me. But I remember very clearly the thing that completely uh, caught my attention for good with the series. I was having dinner with my grandparents, because I was visiting them, uh, and uh, while we were chatting and having a good time, of course, there was the TV in the background with the news. And all of a sudden, I see this guy talking about a video game called Resident Evil 2. I was like, wait a second, there's a sequel? So I look at it, and they were showing the game and saying that the game was basically banned here in Italy because of its extreme violence. So we come a long way from when Resident Evil 2 was considered too much, consider where games are now in terms of violence and everything else. Such an innocent age gone by. But of course I say, oh wow, I remember playing the first game and now you're telling me there's a sequel and it's even banned. Ooh, sign me up. Of course, so I searched high, searched low, I couldn't get it here in Italy, of course. Someone gave me this for my birthday, and soon afterwards I was able to buy this. That's how it happened. So, but I remember this is the first one I played on my own. So, I remember playing a bit of Resident Evil 2, then moving to Resident Evil 1, but this was hard, so I kind of dropped it for a while, and focused on this, and I was able to finish the own campaign, and I loved it. So, um, and I also love this, like, uh, it's not advice to minors and people who can be impressed by violence. So, <laughs> finding it hilarious. So I finished the campaign, then I moved back to Resident Evil 1, and I was able to finish the Jill story with this, but boy, this was tough on the PS1 when I played for the first time. It was also very cryptic at the time, so that's the thing. Um, but then again, at the same time, as I said earlier, the horror element was not really a big deal because I say I didn't find them scary. Sure, there was a jump scare here and there, but I remember like a friend of mine was like, "Ooh, these games are scary. Get be prepared." I was like, "Okay." So I don't know what I was expecting, but I, sure, I wasn't scared. Actually, most of the time, I, I find these things funny because they're ridiculous. But it's kind of the point of the whole series to me. Um, so I played Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 2, absolutely love it, and then the icing on the cake to me was of course Resident Evil 3. I bought this day one because by this time I was really, really into the series. And, ah, uh, oh man, this is my favorite in the whole thing. I love Resident Evil 3. Um, really like the idea of playing Jill Valentine side of story during the events of the destruction of Raccoon City. So it's kind of like the same days as Resident Evil 2 takes, takes place. Um, but of course, in a way, like I, why I liked Leon and Claire, my heart was always on the main characters of one, so I really wanted to see what was happening with Chris and Jill. And this game showed what happened to Jill, but then again, there was kind of a mystery back then, like, where's Chris? What happened to him? But, for example, a friend of mine and me, we had an old theory, we were thinking that Nemesis was Chris, like, for somehow Umbrella captured him and turned him into a monster, which obviously was not the case, but it was kind of, an, we had our own, in, like, conspiracy and story ideas, and everything, like, oh, no, it's not the case. Well, it was fun, but, uh, as I said, like, I loved this, absolutely loved it, because one thing that I love about this trilogy is, um, both like the, the atmosphere, the, the crazy, stupid B-horror movie story, but I also love the gameplay. I'm a huge fan of, especially at the time, because nowadays I haven't touched them in such a long time, so I would be super rusty, I would probably suck at these games. Because of course, as we know, we play, they play as tank controlled. So you have a really tough time controlling your character, but that, as we know, that was on purpose, of course, because not being able to control your character purposefully, um, properly, sorry, uh, that was a mean to increase the tension, thus the fear and everything, and it worked, it was fantastic. So I really, really enjoyed the take control for what they were and their purpose. And Resident Evil 3, together with Dino Crisis 1, perfected 
the tank controls because they were not as stiff as in, say, Resident Evil 2. You could, for example, turn very quickly, like 180 degrees, which was very useful to escape quickly. And one thing that I have to add, Nemesis was a brilliant idea. I still think it was kind of one of the best idea they ever had for the series. So this unstoppable monster chasing you, it increased the tension like tenfold to me. And it's uh, it, the proof is kind of in the pudding. They kind of went back to the Nemesis idea over and over again. Look at Resident Evil 8, for example, the big lady following you around. It's kind of the same thing of Nemesis, but she talks rather than just like growling stars. But the idea is that you could not, you can't stop this monster until the very end of the game. It's like super tough. It can kill you in one or two shots and all of that. It all started with Nemesis. And in a way, you can say, I think to me, personally, I think that Nemesis was kind of inspired by the T-Rex in Dino Crisis, again, the big monster chasing you. Because I don't remember Mr. X being like that in Resident Evil 2. Sure, it was there at one point or here and there, but way less memorable in the original game. I still need to play the remake, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So, Resident Evil 3, loved every second. This is probably the game I finished the most in my life, because if you know me, I don't replay games, especially because, for the most part, I play long JRPGs, and who has time to replay them? Uh, I certainly don't have time to waste to 100% a, a 60 to 100 hours JRPGs. Hell no. But, of course, Resident Evil games are very short. Maybe you can beat them in 5 to 7 hours, traditionally. Uh, there are exceptions, like I talked in my previous Resident Evil 3 remake, video about timing, so you can watch that if you want a bit more information. But in general, as I said, five, six, seven, eight maybe hours and you're done with a Resident Evil. Depending on how much you want to explore and search, uh, the first playthrough will always be a bit longer than you already know what you have to do, you already know the keys to the puzzle, so then already the second one will be much shorter. So, again, they're nice and sweet to replay. They, to me, they have a, quite a few replayability features. But, as I say, I also like the story in this, this trilogy's story. As I say, it's a stupid B-horror story, and I loved it, really loved it. Then things started to change because we took a big break. Like, for the longest time, I haven't touched Resident Evil until I play this. So, Resident Evil 4, it's a weird one to me. Most people will say this is the best in the series. To be honest, it's kind of one of my least favorites. Because while the first time I played it, I liked it. I was a bit perplexed at the time. Because I was thinking, this is really different. Not just for the gameplay. I mean, while I like the tank controls, but I also like this. I think for Resident Evil, it works well. But especially in terms of story, I mean, yeah, it's cool to see Leon and Ada ba back for a new adventure in Spain, I think. Um, saving the president's daughters, and it's like, okay. But then again, there's no umbrella, there are no zombies, because the monsters in this game, they're not zombies. So it's, like, it's barely a Resident Evil game. I mean, I, I will not be too rigid saying it's not because you don't have an umbrella. But at the same time, it was like, and also, again, the gameplay, I liked it, but I, at the time, I still prefer very much the tank controls. So it's a good game if you like it. I can understand it. It's, it's not bad. I'm not saying that. It's just personally, it didn't click too well with me. Uh, for example, I will not play a remake of this. I don't think I want to replay this. Uh, but uh, overall, I had fun when I played it. And that what's what matters at the end of the day and i think this was kind of the definitive version like on the wii because i played with the nunchuck and it worked very well so as i said had fun and really enjoyed my time but the real big deal on the wii of course was this like i played this after four and i was thinking now this is how a modern resident evil should be because i skipped the remake on the wii i knew about it 
but on the GameCube. So I knew about it, but because I never owned a GameCube, I never, I was never really interested in it. Even though there were games that always, they, they always caught my attention. Say, I want to play, um, what's it called? Like Infinite Darkness or something like that. Um, I don't remember the title, but the survival horror on that GameCube with the weird things that happened to the console, I cannot remember. Or the Metroid game, even though they've been re-released on the Wii. So, and of course, Resident Evil Remake. I was, luckily, this was re-released on the Wii. And as I said, to me, this was the perfect modern Resident Evil game. It kept the tank controls. Uh, they worked very well. The game looked amazing, even on the Wii, which was not HD. So uh, this is the Resident Evil 1 I played and finished like crazy. I finished Jill and Leon campaigns multiple times and really, really had a great time and made me appreciate Resident Evil as much as possible. This Because I really like the original on PlayStation, but this, I mean, if you want to play one, the remake is the way to do it. It's been re-released on multiple consoles. I'm pretty sure it's on PS3, PS4. Resident Evil is everywhere, basically, but oof, as I say, if you want to get into the series or you never experienced the first game, the remake is 100% the way to go. It's super good. At the same time, while after I was done with Resident Evil 4 and 1 remake, on the Wii there were also these weird little things, the Chronicles game. So first we got Umbrella Chronicles. These are light gun shooters, uh, because of course with the Wii, it's weird that there wasn't uh, as big as a renaissance of those genre as I thought it would be, because it's with the nunjuck and the, the Wii modes, it's just, it begs for light gun games. And there were some, but as I said, not as many as I imagined, like, I don't know, Time Crisis or Virtual Cop and stuff like that. I would imagine huge collections or remakes or sequels of those games, but not not as much. But Resident Evil, one thing they always did, they try other things and see what's... They throw basically a, a bunch of ideas against the wall and see what's stuck. So we got two Lycan games, I say Umbrella Chronicles first and Dark Side Chronicles first. This is basically a retelling of Resident Evil 0, 1 and 3 in a light gun gameplay style. It's a bit weird, but it's fun for, like, if you want to uh, have fun for a couple of hours with a game like this. So I enjoyed it for what it was. This was kind of, I think, uh, probably Resident Evil 2, I think plus something like a new adventure or something like that. Again, it's the same thing as Umbrella Chronicles. And I finished both of them. They're, they're okay. I mean, they're light gun Resident Evil games. And then there was a big break between me and Resident Evil. While I always loved the series, I'm, the thing is I'm always kind of mad at Capcom, especially at the time, because to me, Capcom, between the NES and the PlayStation 1 era included, it was kind of a top of the world, was the best gaming studio, because they basically released nothing but gems, like between the Disney games on the, on the NES, the, the Mega Man games, uh, on Super Nintendo there were other games, then we got, say, uh, Demon's Crest, and uh, I'm sure there were others I couldn't think of, but of course on PS1 we got Resident Evil, we got Breath of Fire, um, so, the, the, the PS1 to me was the golden age of Capcom. Then from the PS2 onwards, they started to went on the bang side to me, because like, the way they treated Breath of Fire, the way they treated Dino Crisis, which I'm a huge fan of, as you know, and then they just, like, the way they treated Mega Man, I mean, look at Robman's video on that, there's so much stuff that went on during those years. So, while they always develop interesting titles and everything, the way they treated their own series has always perplexes me. And during this time, I was really frustrated with Capcom, I say, especially because of the way they mistreated Breath of Fire and Dino Crisis, which are two of my favorite series, which are now both dead, basically. That's the problem. They left them die. 
um, because like the last game in both franchise they released were not successful. Like I liked Dragon Quarter, but most people didn't. So they kind of abandoned Breath of Fire for more than a decade. And Dino Crisis 3, it's absolute garbage. So again, it killed the franchise, which is a shame. However, in the meanwhile, the Capcom continue to release Resident Evil games everywhere and whenever they can. The same that is basically one of Capcom's main it became one of Capcom's main cash cows together with Street Fighter, which it's a series I never cared about because like my go-to fighting game uh, was Darkstalkers, which again, by Capcom, uh, I love that, while I never really cared about Street Fighter, and instead I keep releasing these games like crazy, it's like, Jesus, take a break from Resident Evil and Street Fighter, you have an amazing library, but no. Nope. Um, so... There's been a huge break, so from the Wii days to the PS4, I've kind of ignored Resident Evil. So the series stayed dormant with me for the longest, for years and years, basically a decade. I haven't touched Resident Evil. Then something changed when, no, in the meanwhile, for whatever reason, I found a called Veronica for very cheap on the Dreamcast when I bought my Dreamcast, and I played a bit of it, it's really cool, but I need to get back and finish it. And I should have Code Veronica X on the PS2 somewhere, um, but as I probably still in London. And also, just as I say, for curiosity's sake, when I bought my PS2, I also tried to get into Resident Evil Outbreak, this the Oddballs sub-series of Resident Evil, which is a cool idea, actually. I played for only like 20 minutes or so, but it's kind of like, you had this bunch of random people stuck in Raccoon City during the whole crisis, and you have to get out of there, basically. I don't remember if maybe it's the sequel that has like call up, like multiplayer stuff like that, so you can play with a friend. And it's, you know, it's, it's an interesting idea, kind of ahead of its time for the PS2 days. Now, something like this would be interesting. If done right, of course. But yeah, I thought like the idea of a bunch of strangers, not the characters we are familiar with, stuck in the city during the, the whole destruction of Raccoon City timeline, it's very cool. And I, I thought that would be perfect for the movies, because we'll get into them later. A bit of a spoiler. So these were just occasional buys, just because they were very cheap or I was curious about them. But the real... The real turn with me in the series, what kind of reignited my interest, the interest has always been there by kind of my passion for Resident Evil, let's say, um, and my willing to play, my willingness to play these games, it's because of Resident Evil 5. Now, this was originally released on PS3 and Xbox, but at the time I was like, yeah, whatever, I, I buy them, I'll buy them or play them another time. Now I have no time or interest for Resident Evil. Um, this is nothing special. I played it, finished it. It's it's a well-made game, but as a Resident Evil... Uh, I mean, maybe I like it a bit more than Resident Evil 4, but yeah. Uh, the problem with Resident Evil is also its story. Like, I love the original idea with the destruction of the city and everything, but from since Resident Evil 4, the, the main plot of the game started to go completely bonkers, and I'm all for this stupid B-horror movies plot, but yeah, at times it's a bit too much, in a way. I mean, I mean, I enjoy Dino Crisis for Christ's sake, and that's even more stupid, <laughs> but anyways, I would say probably since the story has moved from Umbrella and the TNG virus, or the T-Veronica virus, it's not really being the same thing. Now we know there is an original virus, which it's okay, that's interesting, but it's not about Umbrella anymore. Um, but again, like I enjoyed it for it was, but primarily because I spent five euros on this. If I had to spend 50, I wouldn't be so cool about it. But this, even though I didn't love it, I enjoyed it enough to say, huh, I kind of missed Resident Evil. I would like to play more, because at the same time, they're also nice and short. So, it's the... and the Before Resident Evil 5, I, was, I just finished playing 
Trezor Cold Steel 4, which took me more than 100 hours. So this was the perfect palette cleanser, and it's exactly what I want out of these games. So soon after, I played a couple more games like Wolfenstein and Wild Arms, and then moved to Resident Evil 3 Remake. This was brilliant. I mean, I made an entire video. I don't care what most people say. I don't understand why people criticize this. I mean, this is a fantastic remake. It's a bit different, but I um, really, really enjoyed it. If you want to know more what I think about this, watch my previous video. But oh, I love, love, love this. I mean, it's probably the best looking game I ever played, which helps. I mean, I don't care about graphics, but I love good looking games. And following the major success for me with Resident Evil 3, I said, hey, I want to buy more Resident Evil games. So I got Resident Evil 6 on PS3 to continue with the main story, even though I know this is very divisive to say the least. I mean, a lot of people hate this game, uh, but we'll see. Maybe it's not as shitty as most people say, or maybe it is, I don't know, but I'll play it eventually. Then I bought, of course, Resident Evil 2 Remake, because everyone said this is the, the greatest thing ever uh, released, so I'm curious, because everyone said, like, this is so great, when Resident Evil 3 is absolute garbage, it's like, mm, I highly doubt it. To me, Resident Evil 3 has always been better than 2, and before both of them, I also bought Revelations for 15, 20 euros, so it was fairly cheap, and so I'm curious about this, it's a sort of spin-off of 5, Maybe it's a prequel or a sort of sequel, I don't remember, but it's within the time period of Resident Evil 5. And it's all about Jill Valentine, so that's a huge plus. Because as you can imagine, I'm a big Jill Valentine fan. So these are my Resident Evil games, but we have one more item, because how could I resist getting the movies, of course? These are craptastic, let me tell you. I love this, I love, that's a big word, but I like them, or at least I want to like them. So, the first movie, this is pretty good for what it is, I mean, it's a zombie movie, so it's not good, but it's enjoyable. And one thing that I appreciated about this is that they try to do something original by adding Resident Evil elements, so there is the mansion, there is Umbrella, uh, there are uh, there is the liquor monster and all of that, so it's it's kind of cool. I enjoyed it, and it's crazy to think this is from two thousand and two, and it really shows its age, uh, both in the CG department because it's really dated, but also in other choices. For example, the Slipknot song at the end during the end credit that really dates the movie to me. It's so lame in a way, but cool in its other ways. But I enjoy this as like for a video game, for an adaptation of a video game, not too bad because traditionally video game based movies are terrible. So this was fun. I remember I watched it with some friends. We had a great time. Next we got Resident Evil Apocalypse. This I think it's my favorite in the series, but it also when the real problems start, meaning they, they incorporate too much elements from the games in a way just to show, hey, we remember the games, there's Jill Valentine, you love Jill Valentine, right? They should have just focused on the movie plot well, and maybe made some cameos from characters or things from the game just to make the two things connected, but not too much. Just focus on the story within the movie, like the story of Alice. And then the thing is, it's based, this is basically Resident Evil 3, the movie, meets Resident Evil, the movie. It's a bit weird. Uh, I enjoyed it, but it, I say, like, it has story problems because of that, and it will affect the rest of the series. Not that these are masterpieces or anything, but it could have been a decent zombie. It is, but it could have been better. I have to say, though, the addition of Jill and Nemesis, obviously, it's a a big plus to me. It would have been cool to have Nemesis in this movie, but a bit later with a bit more build-up as in a sort of final boss, because it's a long thing, maybe I should do a video about this movie, but who cares. Um, let's just say, I enjoyed this when I watched it in cinema with my best friend, we loved it, we had a great time. 
Now, this is where the problems really exploded because I didn't like this when I watched it. It was kind of my say, okay, I, in, in, enough with these games, with these movies. They are terrible. Um, this movie, it's, I need to rewatch it, to be honest, because when I watched it in cinemas day one with my best friends, like, we didn't like this. Because, like, what the first two, the, the second movies, like Raccoon City and all of that, all of a sudden they say the T virus is spread all over the world. It's like, Jesus, now that's a problem. It takes place in the ruins of Las Vegas. All of a sudden, from Resident Evil went to Dawn of the Dead, basically. Uh, but with Mila Jovovich running around, kicking zombies, being a super soldier kind of thing, it's a, it's a mess, basically. Um, so, I, I don't remember much of this, just that I didn't like it. More recently, I actually, just because I was a, it was a for free on television, like on Sky, I watched Afterlife and I bought this for, I don't know, a pound. And it's okay. I mean, and I was back into Resident Evil, so you know what, I'm gonna buy the, the missing movies, so I have at least a complete collection. For fun, shits and giggles, um, you can really see this was meant to be on 3D, and it's super lame. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, you got Claire Redfield, Chris Redfield in this story that it's like they're finding Arcadia, this uh, promised land, but then of course something went wrong, there's Wesker, and it's like, when? What? Why is Wesker in the movies? So again, trying to force games, the game's elements within the movies just keeps messing up. Then again, just for fun, I bought the two remaining movies. I need to watch this. I can see now you got Barry, you got Ada, this is probably Leo, and I say, why do I keep doing this? But obviously, I guess just to keep the fans happy, but I would have been happy with a nice original story. Uh, and then the final chapter, I heard it's not very good, but we'll see. So I couldn't resist. I had to have these uh, this is silly movies, but it's it's Resident Evil. I wanted to and expand the collection by adding a bit more than just the games. I remember at one point I also had a couple of comics, but they weren't anything special. So this is my Resident Evil collection at the moment. I predict that eventually gonna buy more games. For example, whenever I play all of the new ones, so Revelations, 2 Remake, and 6. Uh, probably gonna try seven because I don't have a seven and eight yet. I'm a bit skeptical about them, or let's say perplexed, because the idea of a first-person shooter called Resident Evil is a bit weird. Maybe they're fantastic. I'm not saying they're bad just because I haven't played them. How can I say they're bad? But I don't know. I prefer the third-person view with this. But maybe I love it. I don't know. I just. Taking my time before that, but I'll try 7 eventually, and if I like it, of course I'll play 8, which I saw has recently shipped more than a million units at least, if not more, so obviously it's been successful, because for Resident Evil it's, it's a very established series by now. It has a, a very dedicated fan base, and uh, yeah, I mean, it started as a series I really love and really enjoyed and fell in love with, then I got tired of it, then I went back into it, and now I'm again in a sort of, I don't want to say honeymoon phase, but I don't know, it's weird to say kind of like when you break up and then you get back together with your ex, because that would be awkward, but it may happen. Perhaps, perhaps we can use that analogy, uh, if it makes any sense. <laughs> But in a way, like, I always liked Resident Evil, it's just that when something is shoved down my throat, I get tired of it. And that was the feeling with Resident Evil, so I took a nice long break, and now that I'm back into it, I really enjoy it. Even if, say, Resident Evil 5 was nothing special, I enjoyed it for what it was. It was the exact, the perfect game I needed after a really long and crazy JRPG like um, Cold Steel 4, that was certain. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy uh, Revelations 2 Remake, and perhaps even 6. And then we'll see. Maybe I'll jump into 7 and we'll see what I think about it. But uh, I think that could be enough. I can talk a lot about those movies, man. It's, oh, they're so much fun. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe I'll make a separate video. Continue the trend like... 
um, horror themed or Resident Evil themed video, or why not? It's always interesting. But regardless, um, thanks so much for watching, guys. What do you think about Resident Evil? Do you like it? You cannot stand it. Um, I guess you've played it because most people have, but if you haven't, are you curious about it? Let me know in the comments or make a video response, whatever you want. But uh, yeah, see you next time and take care.